buongiorno, pizza, spaghetti, mafia. <laughs> Wow, that was amazing. <laughs> All right, so 2.5, the derivative of trigonomic functions. Now, these are easy. They're so easy. Trig is easy, okay? It is easy. It is so easy, it's gonna make you wanna slap your bomb. That's how easy it is, okay? Uh, come on, it's a quote from the movie Friday. It's, it's, anyway. All right, now, listen, hey, now, this, it's different than what you're gonna see on your notes, so you have to add this yourself. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the circle of derivatives. So, top here is sine of whatever angle I have, and we're going this way. So this is my d, d, x. So sine x is going to give me, so the derivative of sine x is cosine x. Derivative of cosine x is going to give me minus, minus wow. sine of x. The derivative of negative sine x minus, minus cosine x. And so the derivative of negative cosine x gives me The wheel of derivatives. Yay. The circle of life. <laughs> it makes one wonder. <laughs> I don't know the rest of these words. <laughs> what? Oh my goodness. Oh. A wee boy. A wee boy. A wee boy. Never mind. All right, so, okay, now, a little bit of both here, okay? Y prime, so we're finding the derivative. So Y prime would be, what's the derivative of X? One, 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 plus, cosine. one plus, what's the derivative of sine? Cosine. cosine, and the coefficient here is four, right? So it's gonna give me four cosine. B, on B, what is the rule that's being used on B? Uh, quotient Which is it, quotient or product? Product, product is multiplication, right? So when I'm doing the multiplication, okay, there's a plus sign in the middle, right? Okay, so let's take a look. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to label first. So we have, this is F, this is G. F prime is what? 2x. And g prime is? Cosine. Right? Okay, so let's go through and use the product rule. So it's going to be 2x uh, sine of x, right? Plus g prime, which is cosine x times x squared. And the only thing I could do is actually factor out an x, right? No, don't do it. Huh? Don't do it? Don't do it. Why not? Okay. Okay. All right. Or put that x squared in front. So it would be 2x sine x plus x squared cosine of x. Okay. All I did is I moved the x squared to the front of the cosine. Still easy, you guys? Okay, all right, so now for letter C. I don't feel like bending over this. Sign X over X. All right, F and G. So F prime is what? Cosine X. Come on. So cosine of x, g prime is 1. So we're going to have cosine of x times, times what? 
x. Very good, x. What goes next? Minus. Minus sign, thank you. 1, which is my g prime, times sine of x all over squared. <coughs> Just a little cleaning up, that's it. So I'm gonna have, put that x out front. So it's gonna be x cosine of x minus sine of x over x squared. Make sense? Yeah. Where'd you get the minus sign? Where'd I get the minus sign? Uh, product rule. Product rule, or I'm sorry, quotient rule. F, quotient rule is f prime g minus g prime f over g squared. That's a quotient rule, and then the product rule is f prime g plus g prime f. So when you have a division, when there is a division like we have here, I come up with this. If it is a multiplication, I come up with this. Okay, those are my product and quotient rule that I've been using. All right, next one, e to the x sine x. e to the x sine x. Now, what rule is this? Product again, right? So product is, so my f here is e to the x, and my g is sine x. f prime is e to the x. g prime is, there we go. So product, so it would be e to the x times sine x plus sine, it would be, cosine of x times e to the x and the only thing I would do is f that so it would be e to the x sine of x plus cosine of x yes okay good yes But isn't tangent, so if you think about it, tangent of x is the same as saying, what is tangent? Tangent is sum over something. Y over, y over x. So the y is the sine, right? Yeah. So tangent is sine of x divided by the cosine x. And what rule do we use for that? If I were to find the derivative of tangent, could I just break it up to that? Mm -hmm. And what rule is that? Quotient. Quotient. So I could just do the quotient there, right? Yeah. Okay, what about if I did, uh, let's say, secant? Secant x. That's the same as saying what? R over x. Okay, so now what, what was always the r? One plus so, so it's 1 over uh, cosine. cosine x, right? So what rule is that? It's well, quotient again, isn't it? So we could do this just using the quotient rule, can't we? Okay, and same thing goes with cotangent. I would just flip it over, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and cosecant, same thing. So everything that we, we do on all these actually comes back to just, you know, can I do the quotient rule? Eventually, I'm gonna just give you guys the flashcard. You would have to just memorize it. Be like, hey, what's the derivative of tangent? And you'd say, Bleh. there you go. <laughs> okay, so yeah, we'll get to there. All right, so now, these are all cosines. Since I already taught you guys a circle, you guys don't need this one again. Because all these are the same thing we just did just with cosines. So I want to get to the next ones. What's our, that should be the tangent. Okay, find all points on the graph of f of x equals x plus sine x where the tangent line is horizontal. Now, a couple things. Tangent line is horizontal. Okay, you guys wake yourself up. 
Horizontal line. Now with your arms, show me horizontal line. Yes. Where's the horizontal line? Okay, there we go. Yes, right there. T pose right here. Show dominance. All right, so horizontal line. So now what is the slope of a horizontal line? Zero. Zero. So this information right here says that my F prime has to equal zero. I want my derivative to equal zero, right? Okay, so I want this to equal zero. So now find out points on the graph of that where the tangent line is equal to zero. Okay, so a tangent line right here, so the slope is gonna be zero. So let's take and first let's go F prime of X, derivative of X is one plus cosine x, right? Now we're gonna do a little bit of math here. Math, okay. So what am I replacing with my f prime of x with? Zero. Zero, that's what I needed that for. Because I'm gonna replace it with zero. So now it's gonna go zero equals one plus cosine x, right? No, it's not an identity. We'll we'll have a we'll have squares and stuff like that. So, so right now we're just algebra this. Okay, what am I what am I gonna do? I want to get one on that side over there, right? So okay, subtract one. So I'm gonna get negative one equals cosine of x. Negative one equals cosine of x. So now I also the next thing I want to do is where is cosine x equal to negative one? So that's to do the arc. Remember what arc, we do the inverse? Yes? Okay, so you, you guys, I don't know if you guys remember, from here you take both these. So I'm gonna change places with this and this. So it would be inverse cosine of negative one is equal to x. So, now if we're using the calculator on this and if it was in degrees, it, may, it would make it really easy. Okay, really easy, you just put in the calculator, bam, it gets your value. But right now, we're not on that. And everything we're doing right now, it's on the unit circle, okay? It's gonna be on the unit circle. So now, we have to think about this. So if I'm on my unit circle, here's my unit circle, cosine is my x values, right? Yes. Cosine is the x value, sine is the y value. So what is this actually saying that I'm looking for? I want my x value to be negative 1. Where is the x value negative 1? Uh, over here somewhere, right? Okay, but where's it at? There's an exact place. No. 2p is positive, that's right here. At pi, right? So right here, this is pi. The coordinate here is gonna be negative one comma zero, isn't it? Just like over here, this is positive one comma zero. Over here I have uh, zero and one. Down here I have zero and negative one. So right here, I'm looking for the x value to be negative one. So therefore, my only answer I'm gonna have here is at pi, okay? So at pi right here. So all, okay, all pi I'm gonna have. So x is gonna equal pi. So now every time it comes back over there. So now, isn't, isn't sine and cosine always like, it, it, isn't it supposed to like just rotate around, right? Say yes. yes. Okay, it's supposed to rotate around. So I'm gonna pull up the calculator so you guys can see this. And uh, so my original is x plus sine. So we have x plus sine x okay it's in radian very good so i hit enter 
Now, right here, right in here is where it's going to give me a horizontal tangent. So I'm going to have one here. So let me do menu, window, and I want to intrig because I want everything in, like way over here is 2 pi. So 6.28 is 2 pi, right? So it would be 2 pi. And then right here, okay. So now that means it's going to right about here and right about here. Those are the places in which that is going to be my zero slope, right? This is flat. So if I graph my derivative, actually, let's go here. Uh, tap, there we go. All right, so the derivative was 1, right, plus cosine of x. So what it was saying is every place that my this right here is equal to 0, so since this is my derivative, right, every place that this is equal to zero is going to be one of my answers. So over here I have pi, right? But way over here, I also have one, right? Okay, so way over here, so that would be, so if this is zero, okay, and all the way over here is pi, so this one on this side would be negative pi, right? That'd be negative pi, but it doesn't come back up again right here at two pi, right? Where's the next time it's going to touch again? 3 pi. Three pi. Okay, and after that, where's it going to touch again? 5 pi. Five pi, and it's going to be? Okay, very good. So there is a pattern to this, right? There is a pattern. So the pattern, so since I know it's going to be this, and sine and cosine always rotate around, okay, because it's always going to be a wave, okay, it's not just going to be pi, because that's only one point. But there's a bunch of these points that the slope is going to be zero. So it's going to be plus, plus how much? Two pi. Two pi. Plus, okay. Two pi and some coefficients which we can multiply by sine of this. How much can we? How many? Like, and for example. So you're saying like two, two pi. and no pi. Two oh, pi n. Yeah, how many numbers, right? So every time I get one of them, right? So so if I if I get one, that's going to get me at three pi, right? So my first point would put me at zero, right? My first point would be just at pi. My next one would be at one more, right? Would be how much? So it'd be this one plus two pi. So that would be three pi, right? And the one after that would be two. So that would be four. So that would be five pi, right? So this is a pattern to this. There's a sequence on this because sine and cosine are waves that keep coming back over and over because it is a continuous wave. Okay, so there's usually on sine and cosine you're going to have you know, more than one answer. So that's why a lot of times you're going to see it over an interval. So an interval would mean, hey, okay, I only want an answer from, wow, my board is not liking me today. My interval would be from like 0 to 2 pi. And that would be an interval that I would have on there. So I would start at 0 and 2 pi. That means it would be limiting my number of answers. So I would only want the answers that are inside this window here. So starting at 0 and ending at 2 pi. So if I had a limit like that, I would only have one answer, right? Yes, I would only have this one because the next one after this was... 3 pi, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it would be 3 pi. So that would be outside this interval. And so, okay. But a lot of these uh, these trig functions, you'll see stuff like that. So a lot of the word problems, you got to like, take a look at what is my interval I'm going to be using. Okay, derivative tangent is? Secant squared. Do you want me to do the work? I'll show you because you guys are going to have to remember this anyway. So it's either you memorize it or you know where it comes from. So especially on the test, you're going to be like, oh, crap, I forgot. What is tangent? And you'll be like, oh, okay. I know tangent is sine x over cosine x. So this is f. This is g. f prime is cosine x. g prime is negative sine 
x, right? Yes. All right, so f prime, so it's cosine of cosine x, right? Times g, which is cosine x minus g prime negative sine x times f, which is sine x all over g squared, which is cosine uh, squared x, right? Now, when I distribute this negative right here, it's going to be make it positive, right? So now I'm going to have cosine squared, right? Cosine times cosine plus sine squared over cosine squared x, right? Now, yeah, there we go. I get one, right? So it's cosine squared plus sine squared is going to give me one. So this is going to give me one over cosine squared x. And we know that one over cosine is just secant. That's my reciprocal there, right? So isn't one over this, this is going to be secant, but if it's cosine squared, that is secant squared. See, like I said, all these are ones that we've done already. They're all just quotient rules. Okay, let me see. I think that's it for today. Yeah, here's all your stuff. So those, 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 they're all worked out for you already. Okay, and I'll get to this one tomorrow. All right, don't forget, like and subscribe. I'm good. I'm good, thank you.